is... Oh, got my watch. Get it back. Okay, this time I'm sure we won't have any like diversions like we did with the uh Roman restoration. Oh Nishgard. Oh my lord Emigos, we are waiting your coming. The phenomenon wherein men turn into monsters it pains to say that Ishgard has not been spared. The dread blasphemy has appeared in the Holy See, and to compound the people's horrors, the beast resembles a dragon. It is imperative that it be vanquished without delay, and to that end we have, we have begun assembling a hunting party. Given that their fear and despair may turn our allies against us, we are being stringent on whom we choose for this duty. Yet, while we have confidence in the quality of our knights, the mission would greatly benefit from the presence of a battle mage, one who can stand unflinchingly in the face of our fellow quarry. You would be hard-pressed to find an individual who fits that description better than you. Would you not lend us your strength and skill? And count on me. We are on your debt. Just a moment while I relay the glad tidings to command. This settled. Upon arriving in Ishgard, please take yourself to the Aetherite Plaza. Plaza. Well, that's how I'm going to be. I'm teleporting right there. Lord Arturel will be there to receive you. May the Fury speed your way. There he is. Emigos, I've been expecting you. Words cannot full, uh, well express how heartening it is to have you fighting beside us. Allow me to echo that sentiment. Lord Emmerich. Greetings, my friend. Lest you wonder, Lord Arturel and I are leading the effort to deal with the blasphemy. With our, with our capable self in the fold, I have no doubt that we shall succeed. Without further ado, I shall brief you on the situation. Twas a handful of days after the first beast appeared in Rutherton. An Ellison man was observed at the Hoplon. And the pillars walking with an unsteady gait. All of a sudden, he buckled over as if in pain, and before anyone knew what had happened, he was transformed into a tr tr terrible draconic beast. At the mere sight of it, many who chanced to be present also turned, and regrettably, the temple knights were forced to put them down. The blasphemy himself, itself, however, took weaning fled. Profane Fafnir. Yeah, we have chosen to call it after the dragon man of, of Ishgardian myth. Since that day, the beast has often sighted in the skies above Ishgard. It does not attack, only circles menacingly for a time, uh, disappearing again. Last, these brief visitations were enough to cause more people to turn and for fear and panic to spread further. As part of our investigation, we have sought to identify the man who became the blasphemy, and thus far we have learned not. Uh, we have, have, however, identified a common thread between those who su subsequently turned. All are people of fervent faith, people such as priests and inquisitors. When the truth of our nation's history was laid bare, the legitimacy the legitimacy of the church was called into question. 
Many Ishgardians struggled to reconcile the relate with the revelations with their beliefs, and none more than than the pious. Such men and women we exposit we posit would be more susceptible susceptible to despair and therefore the transformation. We must find a way to stop it. Ishgard is only only just emerged from a thousand year war, and we cannot suffer another great tragedy, much less so soon. In order to attain a better understanding of the situation, we intend to speak with a member of the clergy. The sole individual who survived witnessing the blasphemous blasphemy's birth without being turned. Clem is his name. He is a deacon in the St. Raymond's Cathedral. Come, let us seek him out there at once. Lord Emmerich, Lord Otero, and the saviour of Ishgard besides, you do me great honour. I'm Clem, and I serve as a deacon here at St. Ramelard's Nod's Cathedral. I understand you were among those at the Hoplon when the incident occurred. We give thanks to the Fury for your merciful preservation. We now seek to prevent the blasphemy from wreaking further havoc, and would appreciate any details you could provide. Though, though we are to make you call, recall unpleasant memories, will you not recount to us what you witnessed that day? Very well. We are presently relocating the vault's libraries to the cathedral, in case you were unaware. We have finish, finished gathering a bunch, batch of tomes, and we're on our way to bring another one. As we approached the hoplon, we noticed the young man walking unsteadily. No sooner had he come to an abrupt halt than he transformed into a draconic beast. The fiend fixed us with a menacing glare, and it was all we could do to find our wits and flee. But to my compounding horror, my brethren who were with me began turning into monstrosities as well, one after another. Praise the fury, fury that you, at least, were spared, Deacon Clem. I cannot imagine how frightening the experience must have been. Uh, Bishop Vatano. Forgive me if I interrupt, but I am informed that our star protectors are present and wish to express my gratitude. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for your service. I pray that you shall soon be free of the scourge. Indeed, if there is aught we might do to aid your effort, you need but say it. You are most kind, Your Grace. That was Bishop Vartano, the head of St. Romanod's Romanod's St. Ray. I'm just going to say St. Ray. St. Ray's and a member of, of the Synod. The seat of the Archbishop Vacant, he is in effect the highest authority in the Ashgardian Orthodox Church. This is so, yet in spite of his elevated station, he remains as kind and humble a man as that any I have ever known. Like his grace, I would fall, do all that I can to help shepherd our people through this uncertain time. 
In that end, there is a request I would make of you, if you could spare a moment to consider it. Of course, if it is within our power, we should be glad to offer our aid. Thank you. I wonder what that aid would be. In the wake of the transformations, a group of clergymen fled the city in fear. Yet, though they sought refuge in the wilderness, they put themselves at the mercy of the elements and fell fiends both. Given that the cause of the transformation is not clear, I think theirs was a un decidedly unwise decision. I wish to set out and find them, but I am not trained in the ways of war. As such, I require those who are, who are to accompany me in the search. But that is way of it. Suffice it to say, we will help. Do you know whether your fellows may have headed? The western hinterlands, I believe. Between Gorgane's Mill and Hemlock, there is no shortage of abandoned dwellings in the area. Very well. Time being of the essence, I propose we split up and scour separate areas. And because if you could escort the good deacon to Gorgane Mills, Lord Otterell and I will tend to Hemlock. Central and want Western. You! Ah, I see you found them. Yes, and none the worse for wear, thank the Fury. My friends, forgive us if we have, have given cause for alarm. We came out of concern for your well being. Though you, we understand why you quit the city, we fear you may have placed yourself at a greater risk by coming here. His Grace, Mrs. Fartino, too, was for your health and praise for your swift return. Please, will you not allow us to escort you to the Holy See? I assure you we will be much safer than in this wretched place. Servants of the Fury will never be safe in the city, don't you see? This is your fault, you and your cursed revolution. The people disdain us, mock us beyond our backs, and spit in our faces. And now, someone is conspiring to transform us into monstrosities, enemies of the church, I'll wager, emboldened by your deeds. So no, I will not go back to Ishgard. I will sooner freeze to death than suffer your pity. What? All I have ever done was in the service of her. I am a good man. I do not. She cannot forsake me. Ah, oh, alone I preserve.
And the ghost, we cannot allow him to harm any others. Give chase and do what you must. We will remain here and keep the others calm. Is it done, Emigos? No thanks. What happens most regrettable. But we may, must be grateful that no one else came to harm. While you were gone, the deacon was able to convince the others to return to the city. Let us escort them back at once and then reconvene at the congregation to discuss our next course of action. For our purposes, we are to use we we have the use of this strategy room. Announce yourself to the god within, and he will show you in. And the Forgotten Knight. I forgot an Aether Edge Shark. I think the, it got the Aether Edge Shark because it's where the inn is. Also, we have lag. Yay, lag. Rugged and Paladin. Interesting, uh... Interesting glam there. If we can see players, we can't see NPCs. Well, some players. Because there's a somewhere around here somewhere. There's a car bunker right, th right there. It's definitely not this Reaper. What else do we have here? We got somebody in physical Shire gear. I, didn't, I was never a fan of the physical Shire gear. Physical range, I should say. Magical range. Fantastic. I love it. Magical heals? Fantastic. Uh, the magical scouting, the ninja one, was pretty good. Although, the the hands were gloves that went up to, like, pass, pass the elbow. I really don't get those type of gloves. I, I hate those. But, in general, it looked good. Striking and maiming, I think, would look pretty good, too, for, for the, uh... Very gear. Oh. Ooh, we're getting this big lag spike here. 
There we go. Got our Temple Knight Guard here. Well, Emmerich and Altrud will wait you within the strategy. Will you be joining them? Yes. Instant room, which means less luck. Unless you wonder, we've taken the clergyman to St. Saint Ray's. I'm going to just say St. Ray's. Ray's to rest and recover. And truth be told, the thought that they may still succumb to despair in turn remains in the forefront of my mind. Yet the risk may be, would be greater still were we, we to keep them at arm's length and deny them the comfort of the church. Indeed. From the words he spoke, this that Inquisitor yearned for the days of old. He and the others, like him, will scarcely be blamed. Since the truth of the nation's founding and the Archbishop's machinations made public knowledge, the church has been in turmoil. I'm not doing much for the for accents. I'm not trying. Mainly I'm trying to get through this because uh, a little bit faster because I really want to finish this before making meatloaf. I know, my thoughts are on meatloaf for some reason. I like meat. Take that as you will. Though we made great strides in separating religion and state, there has been far less progress in the reformation of the church. For our faith has been everything, everything to us, our purpose and our comfort. It is not an easy thing to reconcile one's beliefs with the betrayal of our spiritual leaders. Thus torn between their hearts, hearts and mind, many Inshkardians feel lost, and none more so than members of the clergy, whose faith is once was, which, whose faith was once unshakable. <clears throat> Little wonder then that the most dedicated and devout are like to turn. So it seems, but further investigation is needed ere we draw a definite conclusion. With the war's end, Ishgard has set on a new path. The choices we make now shall determine our course for the future. Come on may, we dare not squander the chance we have fought so hard to attain. Once the returned clergyman has sufficiently calmed down, I shall have the deacon speak with them. We might gain insight in their individual plights. Good. Meanwhile, I shall take the opportunity to brief my men on recent developments. Pray take a moment's rest, my friend. You have earned it. When you are ready to continue our work, you may seek us out here. Normally it'd be like, as soon as you level to 86, I'm seeing. Ah, I'm a ghost. Your timing could not be better. Deacon Clem has finished speaking with the rescued clergyman and will be here shortly to share his findings. Motor Emmerich 2 is on his way. Let us wait for them. Clem is our representative of the clergy, which we appreciate. Deacon Clem, we thank you for making the inquiries on our behalf. It was no imposition in the least. As I said, I'm glad to do all I can. So it is our understanding that those we escorted back are all close, close acquaintances of the Inquisitor who turned. Like him, they too have the subject of harassment have been subject to harassment by certain quarters of the populace. Is this correct? It is, I am afraid. They are far from alone. Men the cloth were once afforded respect and deference as servants of Heloni, but now they are openly reviled by many. We were in complicit in perpetuating terrible lies. This is true. But we too were misled. We too are victims. We are regarded by some as criminals. Well, do I understand the pe people's anger, but it saddens me to think that they have thus, they would thus slash out their fellow man, especially when they need solitary, 
when we need solidarity most of all. No, I can imagine your plight. I would not presume to fully grasp your pain. Will you tell us of the challenges you and yours have had to face since the war's end? Like all sons and daughters of Ishgard, we dreamed of peace in our lifetime. But now that it has come, we find we have little cause to rejoice. Our faith has long been the foundation of our lives, and overnight that foundation has been crippled by fractures, beyond repair for some. To learn that we have been deceived and that we were unwittingly deceived others in turn was devastating. We who had once been shepherds to men found that ourselves long lost, lost lambs, bereft of surety and wanting for, for guidance. We have languished in darkness, all of us. Yet I have faith that the church will redeem itself, that it will find a new path and again become a beacon of hope for the people. Oh, this music! This was used a lot in Shadowbringers, my favorite expansion! Ah! I see. Thank you for sharing it with us. Your testimony has confirmed our suspicions. According to our allies, this. That which causes people to turn is none other than this despair and anguish. If it wasn't before, it is now abundantly clear why members of the clergy are among, among the Transforms. That you did not, I believe, is due to your unwavering faith in the Church. In light of this, we would ask for your continued cooperation. Of course. Anything to help my brethren. Now that we uh, have established the cause, that leaves us with the mystery of profane Fafnir's identity. The progenitor of these troubles. Could he too have been a man of the cloth? From what I recall of his garb, I doubt it. He was dressed in the common fashion and inadequate and inadequately against the cold besides. It is said that something of the individual may rem remain in the blasphemy and influence in his behavior. If we can determine what instincts drive profane Fafnir, we, can we may learn who it was once was, and this knowledge, I believe, will prove vital in our efforts to stop it. Eakin Clem, we ask that you reach out to your fellow clergymen. Please do what you can to ease their anxieties. Understood. As I have ever done, I shall prove what comfort Provide what comfort I can to those in need. Meanwhile, we must make it a priority to identify the blasphemy. And to that, to that end, I would seek out more eyewitnesses. The Hoplon is a busy place at any given time. Some ordinary citizens are bound to have been present at the tra tragic events unfold. I propose to make inquiries in the pillars. If you would attend to, if you could attend to the Hoplon, Lord. Arturo and I will look at the surrounding areas. Tribunal might have been closer. The dragon that appeared at the Hoplon? I I saw it with my own eyes. One moment in Ellison, the next a terrible beast. He was a heretic, I take it.
It wasn't present at the incident at the Hoplum, but a young man poorly dressed for the cold that I did see. I recall him him well beside uh, well because an aide from St. Vendros was searching for him. He was a patient in the infirmary. By coincidence had the had the same name. Hmm. Okay. Well, it seemed to be on this same level. Maybe not. If I go down, does the, do I get a directional arrow? Is it by the last visual? Aha! Right next to the Aetherite Shard. No, I didn't see that, dragon. Nor would I have wished you, frightful as it sounds. They say it wasn't a Dravani attack, but if not, then what was it? Oh, well, that was not helpful. That's all right. Up here. I mean, these days I gotta go around and just unlock. Once I've like cleared everything out, got everything up, I think the big thing I need to do on all my characters is just make sure everything's unlocked. Here you are, I'm a ghost. Did your search yield any fruit? Patient of the Feminence of Femory, you say? Among those of whom I spoke, one claims to have witnessed an individual fitting that description. The man walking in his stupor did not seem to feel the cold. If he had wandered straight out of the infirmary, it would explain his state of attire. Yes, I dare say we have found our blasphemy, but to think that his name would have been Vandro. Tis the same as that of the former Heavensward commander, Sir Vandro de Rochemont, whom the infirmary is named. Sir Vandro, however, retired from the station as a ripe, ripe old age some years ago. Does not like to have been him. In any case, we have a lead. Shall head to the infirmary at once. Pray wait for me in the broom. You know, for how long it's been since I've, I've done Heaven's Work for the first time, there have been plenty of times where I found new routes through Ishgard. Like, this path right here, I never noticed it. I kept walking right past it. This leads right down to the front gates. <laughs> Well, normally I would be coming around here because I'm like, oh, this is the way to get to go up. I could have gone from the front gates up here. It's just these weird little things. This is L Loverick, the aide who was in charge of Vendro. 
Have you found him? Oh, please say you have. We have not, I'm afraid. But we seek to, and hope you could tell us more about him. May we ask how he came to be at the infirmary? We were, he was found by a patrol in the Central Highlands. After being treated for his hurts, he was brought to us for convalescence. Been in the pr prime of his years. Being in the prime of his years, he'd been doing well. But then... Time of his years. By all accounts, he is no old man. Seems safe to assume he isn't Sir Vandro. Oh no, he's definitely a different person, as I told Lord Artwell. But though he gave his name as Vandro, he's he seemed rather confused, and he was in no means to confirm his, he had no means to confirm his identity. In his day, we he shouldn't be wandering about on his own. Please, you must find him. The man you, re you recently turned into a beast at the Hoplong, we regret to say, may have been Vendro. What? No, how could this be? Is there aught else you can tell us? Things he may have said or done while in your care. Hmm. While he was still con unconscious, he would often ramble. Though most of it was incoherent, he mentioned the Archbishop many times. Oh, and he spoke of a bishop too, Bishop Fartino. I assumed he was a pious man given this. I see. Thank you for your cooperation. We will continue our investigation, and should we confirm what became of Andro, inform you, inform you forthwith. Let us return to the congregation for now. The Warrior of Light is a leader and a follower, both. He lets everybody go ahead of him. Mystery remains, but we have one step closer to identifying the man who became profane Fafnir. Indeed, though he did not did not at first appear to be a member of the clergy, his words betray a fervent faith. And how curious he would speak not only of the Archbishop, but Bishop Vatano as specifically. Perhaps he was personally acquainted with his grace. In light of the possibility, I believe we, sh we should speak with him directly. Agreed. I will request an audience, but his grace has many demands upon his time. It may be a while before we are seen. Should we have any you have other business, pray feel free to attend to them in the meantime. Here we go, it's excellent timing as ever. Deacon Clem has just sent word that Bishop Vartano will see us now. By which I mean right this instant. Yes, extremely short notice, I know, but it would not do to miss the opportunity to learn how he and Ventro 
Vendro may connected. Not wishing to keep his grace waiting, Lord Emmerich is already on his way to St. Ray's Cathedral. Come, let us hurry there ourselves. This would be a perfect time for them to just, like, transition into a cutscene and teleport me. But... No, because I could be like, oh, I need to go do this, or, oh, my key's up, and stuff. Maybe I'll just say St. Raymond's. That way we at least have a little bit more syllables. Raymondo. Remendu. Reminade. Dr. Clem. My lords, I'm so sorry. I informed his grace that you'd be... You were making your way hither, but shortly before you arrived, he recalled that he had urgent business and had to leave the cathedral at once. He cannot have gone f yet gone far, though, so if you wish to search for him in the hopes, you can still steal a moment of his time. To grant an audience only to depart with such, such haste. Business could be so pressing. Thank you, Clem. You are a paramount of the clergy. And of course, we're in the city, so we can't mount up to move along. Oh, there we go. Far to know. Right down the steps. That's all we need to worry about. Well, now, that even the savior of Ishgard should be... Uh, and Grace, perhaps it's it is simply an, a misunderstanding, but we were under the impression you had granted us an audience. Well, speaker, rest assured, I I was just about to return to this to the skeet. Oh, speaker, rest assured, I was just about to return to the cathedral. There is no need, your grace. This will not take long. As you may have heard, we are investigating a young man named Vendro. If he is he known to you? No, I cannot say he is. The exception of the former Archimandrite, I am sure I know no one by that name. But mine and the Archbishop certain are known to many, yes. Perhaps perhaps this youth took inspiration from the public services over which he, we presided. Goodly so that he is. Full glad that I am that his faith was of comfort to him in sickness. I pray to Heloni that he will soon be found in good health. Now then, if there is nothing else, I shall return to my duties. Echo! To the rescue. Fear not, your minutes. I shall carry on your legacy. We have completed the preparations as per your instructions, but are you certain this will work? It will. It must. Lord Emric spoke the truth when he revealed the Archbishop's sought primal powers to strengthen the people's faith. I could not bring myself to believe it, not at first, but in the course of cataloging his eminence per personal articles came upon his journal. Therein he was written that although through adamant ether and fervent prayer it is possible to make gods of men. All the power we require lies in this place, this Asislana, by channeling the essential elements into the soulless flesh and the sword we found. We shall summon forth King Thord and in his knights twelve, and by his blessing Ishgard shall be restored to his former glory.
What? What is this? It's just an ordinary man, scarcely changed from before. Eminence, I must protect. <sighs> no, no, this isn't right. Confound it. Perhaps I overlooked something. Must return to the Holy See and review the journal. Well, Grace, what shall we do with this thing? Leave it. It is a failure without use of value. The denizens of this place would deal with it soon enough. Amigo, so you well? Will you pretend grant to the vision of the past? Exposition. An attempted summoning of King Thordon and his knights twelve? Your Grace, you should know full well that summoning is strictly forbidden. You will accompany me to the congregation and explain yourself. I have dedicated my life to the church, conducting my affairs in accordance to the scriptures and taught others to do likewise. But you took it all from us, tore down everything that defined us. You cannot know how it feels to have your very existence rejected, to be forsaken by your community, to be denied by your society. Well, I deny you and this justice. I deny it in Ishgard where the church has no place. I refuse to accept it. Do you hear? I refuse to accept it. Oh, another one. Your grace. No. That it should come to violence yet again. Would that your hand have not been forced, my lord. Deacon Clem should not be alone at this time. I shall remain with him while tending to the aftermath. When things have settled, I will return to the congregation. Pray go and head and get some rest. Well, go fight that one. So most likely our Vendro uh was a was whoever was that dead body. Like he was already dead. Into the strategy room.
How fares the deacon? Well enough, given the circumstances. Though understandably shaken, he is more determined than ever to help his fellows. Truly, he is possessed with a stout heart. And to think that even a member of the Synod could, could come to despair in turn. The crisis gripping the church is far graver than I had imagined. When pushing for such an abrupt separation of religion and state, it may have exasperated the growing divide between the clergy and the general populace. Emigos, will you recount in full what you witness in your vision? Exposition. That he should seek to use one of Alec's unholy abominations to create a primal. Yet, that mu which manifested was not like the being fought, but rather retained the form of man, when driven by the desire to protect the Archbishop. We may safely assume the bishop did not have sufficient ether. Uh, bereft of Nidhogg's eye, the sword Ashalon no longer had such power. Nor does that of the Warring Triad remain to be harnessed, thanks to your val valorous intervention. But if the summoning failed, how did the clone come to, come to possess life? And what purpose drives it? Lack of ether notwithstanding, the necessary components are present for summoning. Perhaps the ritual itself was a success, and the vessel, though imperfect, rose as a champion of the Archbishop. Yet, how did he come to be in the central highlands? You believe that this clone and the man who became the blasphemy are one and the same? Nay, I merely speculate. Yet, considering, considering what we know of the clone in, in Vendro, it would seem a likely possibility. Whatever the truth may be, it will not elude us forever. But first, I must lay some groundwork from the next phase of our investigation. God's permitting, I will have news to share ere long, so pray look in on us when you can. Where are we in, in XP here? A little less than 500k, which is in, so this should ding us. Come on, guys. You know, I have a slight for sore eyes. Ill tidings, my friends. I dispatched the Temple Knights to find the clergyman who aided in B Bishop Vatina's summoning attempt. Regrettably, when confronted, all turned and were, had to be put down. Without their accounts, how then to ascertain that the clone and Vandro were the same individual? Maintaining the assumption that they are, perhaps, you know, perhaps we should con instead consider how Vandro may have found his way to Kerthus. According to Amigos' vision, he was abandoned in Nasus Law, and what did he do afterwards? Then there's but one way to ascertain the truth. We follow his trail. I shall go and search for the clone clone in Nasus Law. If he is still there, then we are dealing with a different individual. Splendid idea. We leave the floating We leave the floating continent in your capable hands. Meanwhile, Amigos and I shall retrace Vendro's steps whence he first appeared. appeared. Upon being found in the Central Highlands, he was taken to Camp Dragonhead. Let us begin by making inquiries there.
Oh, we talked to her once before. Well now, isn't the late Lord Horsch Fonts dear friend? Is there anything you require? Ah, yes, the mystery man. I was among those who tended him. He was not tired for the snow, much less the snowstorm in which he had been caught and was suffering from frostbite. When people are extremely cold, they may mistakenly feel that they are warm and disrobe. That might explain his state of unrest. Investigating the stranger we found, are you? I was involved, involved myself, but I can't tell you, but I can't, t so I can't tell you much about the fellow. But in case it is of interest, earlier in the same day, I caught sight of an airship flying dangerously low. It soon disappeared into the brewing snowstorm, looking none too steady. A airship flying low. Hey, is it a mana lane? In charge here? Oh. Ah, tis ever an honor to receive you. What brings you to our humble camp this day? An injured man was found in the wilds. Yes, I know the one. I was with the patrol that chased into him north chanced into him north of here at Providence Point. He was unconscious and in a bad way, and we hurriedly bore him back to the camp. After doing what we could for him, we sent him to the city. Vendro was found. There you are. Were you able to learn art of interest? These three things. The mysterious man found collapse after an airship was seen flying low. Yes, the accounts I heard were consistent with was I, for one, am curious about the fate of the unknown airship. To that end, I have arranged a pair of black chocobos for us, the most efficiently to scour the area. We shall contain our search to Providence Point, where Vendro is said to have been found. If you're ready, let us be off. Mount the black chocobo. At one point, black chocobos were the ones that could were the chocobos that could fly. Any others could not. Nothing so far. Let's continue northeast. Blasphemy in the airship. By the fury. It's the blasphemy. And echo. So it's the ADA quest where we get the echo. I think it's always the ADA quest.
Zeminus must protect Zeminus. You're finally awake. Loni be praised. How are you feeling? Strong enough to speak? Can you tell me your name? My name is... My name... My name is... Is... Zephyrin, no. Rallabert, no. What was it? Vilgeen. Or Polycrane. Many names swelling in my mind, voices that reject them. Is there none they will accept? Are you all right? Vandro. My name is Vandro. Oh, no. That's the same as our infirmary. Just say fate has guided you to us. So, Vandro, you're feeling up to a little conversation. Can you tell me about yourself? Anything you remember? Anything at all? Proud son of House Zamile. Nay. A devout servant of Felone who lives for the rush of battle. The pleasure, pleasure in inflicting pain. The attentions of maidens to fight beside my brothers in arms. A lowborn runt whose every effort went unrewarded. Whose very name disqualified him from, from ever leading the Temple Knights. But his eminence raised me up, granted me a place at his side. From that day forth, I pledge my sword to his service, pledge my very being, my life to be offered up in defense of his. I am a knight of the heavens, Ward, sworn to protect and serve the Archbishop. Well, you're a knight. Forgive me if that sounded rude, but I have no idea. And while I realize your memories may be a bit muddled, I'm afraid I must inform you that the Heavensward has not been seen in quite some time, and I'm presumed dead, and the Archbishop, well, he is most certainly no longer of this world. But the important thing is you're safe now, and we'll help you get back on your feet. Speaking of which, let me bring some food and water. You must be absolutely famished. The Archbishop. Dead? No. This can't be. How can I still be alive when he is not? Must find him. And it goes. For the glory of King Thorden.
of the vision, I take it. Let us make for Ishgard. I expect that Lord Arturo will return soon, if he has not already. You should both be glad to hear your tale. in foundation because <laughs> then I would have traveled a very short distance <laughs> into the strategy room I should be glad to show you in Ah, here we go. I pray your your search is most productive. Was more productive than mine, uh, mine own. Everyone is here. Excellent. So, were you able to find uh, your our clone in Asisla? Nay, not but the discarded Escalon remained. I fed you with your own efforts in the Central Highlands. In the course of retracing Vendro's steps, we came across the wreck of the Sol Soleil. I suspect he found the vessel abandoned in Nazisla and tried to use it to return to Ishgard. But he crashed en route and subsequently rescued by a patrol from Kemp Dragonhead. So it would seem, and the Archbishop's airship was not the only thing we found. Profane Fafnir was there too. The creature chose to flee, but not before Embergos had a vision of Vendro's past. Go on, friend. Share with us what you witnessed. Exposition. All well, the pieces fit. It is as you surmise, my lord. Vendro and the clone are one and the same, and in his despair he turned into the blasphemy. Yet the confusion he exhibited when asked his name, it is as if he wasn't sure of his own identity. According to the Scions, primals retain the memories of their previous incarnations. From this, we assume that the clone harbors the memories of all those who became King Thoradin in his Knights Twelve. Though he struggled to reconcile those conflicting memories, he managed to settle on the name Vendro. The voices within are clearly clearly in agreement when facing Emigos, the mere sight of whom drove the blasphemy to fr flee. Above all, however, they share in the desire to protect the Archbishop. This desire was seared into Vandro's very being when he learned that he no longer had a purpose. The Heaven's Ward took up arms against us in Ishgard. By their hand where we robbed one of our finest knights and a dear friend. Even so, I would not wish such a terrible fate upon them. Self same self same fate inflicted upon and many a full many clergymen, and a fate I fear ordinary citizens will succumb to if we fail to act. People will not soon forget the betrayal of our church's leadership, nor should they. But absent the comfort and stability once afforded to them by the institution, many have become lost and are all too vulnerable to despair. Church can still be a source of comfort. I thought as much myself, my friend. And to hear you say it as well, indeed. 
The ground upon which we stand crumbles, we must find the strength to move forward, even should it cause us pain to do so. Lord Atterell, at the next house session, I shall call for a mimical council to be held. My lord, such a gathering is reserved for... Oh, you intend for the church to codify new doctrine. Since the separation of religion and state, we have refrained from interfering in church affairs. But if the church is to remain a part of Ishgardian society and continue serving the people, it must reconsider its role and formally address recent revelations. We would call forth this council not as the Lord's speaker, but as a humble adherent of the faith. Long had I considered whether such m measures were necessary, but lacked the courage to set them in mo motion. I now have it. Have it thanks to you. I shall tend to the necessary preparations at once. Among other things, we must reach out to those of the clergy who are amenable to reform. I ask for your patience in the meantime. Ding. Hence, medification. There's another thing. Oh, we probably get this as part of enhanced medification, right? Chris's maximum sex is six. This says I got enhanced magnification too. But I also got the action resolution. Scorch has changed from resolution upon landing in Scorch in, action com in a, a combo action. So when I do three... Enhanced Molinese or the repose combo or redoublement combo. Repose? Redoublement? Repost Vershow or Zoro. <laughs> Enhanced redoublement. Then Verflare, Verholy, Scorch. Resolution. This is the 89 quest. I might be able to finish this up. Anyways, I'm a ghost. Owing to Lord Emmerich's swift action, I'm pleased to say that the enum the ecumenical council will be held soon. In case you're un unaware, the council is the highest, highest assembly in the Ishgardian uh, Orthodox Church. Church. Its purpose is to deliberate and decide upon doctrine. The previous one was held no less than 80 years ago, and four archbishops have since come and gone. As such, most Ishgardians know little of it save that which they have read in the historical records. Traditionally, the Archbishop and the members of the Synod would meet behind closed doors. In light of Bishop Fartano's fate, however, this time, the doors will be thrown open to the public. Indeed, for the first time in history, all men and women in the faith may have a hand in shaping the mission and the teachings of the Church. It is my hope that you will also join us in the endeavor. Deacon Clem, allow me to express my gratitude for your efforts in facilitating the council. We appreciate the difficulty of your position. I merely heed my conscience and my faith, my lord. Acting in ba Bishop Vatner's stead, I shall do all within my power to see that the church may serve the people once more. Where is the lord speaker, if I may ask? He stepped outside for a moment, saying he wished to gather his thoughts ahead of the council. The hour draws nigh, however... Emigos, I shall proceed to the vault for the good, with the good deacon. 
In the meantime, may I ask you to find Lord Emmerich? He, he should be at the last vigil, I believe. I'm actually really excited to get to the, to the final uh, chapter of this. Mainly because I, I want to use my new action. <laughs> Which I've never done before. I'm so excited. It's so... it's silly. But I will tell you this. Before level 90, Alize has been doing this, <laughs> this move. Kind of annoying. Ah, tis you, my friend. The time already. I see. My apologies for making you come and fetch me. I've been thinking, Amigos, on the path I've been chosen to walk and on those who have been left behind as a consequence of my actions. Those who died fighting, whose burden is boundless with boundless grief, those deprived of position and purpose. Like any nation, Ishgard is made up of desperate, desperate souls, disparate souls with disparate beliefs. Without an enemy to unite us, we recall the differences we once set us set aside out of necessity and find amongst our old friends new ideological foes. The future I had envisioned is far more difficult to secure than I ever imagined. What must I do for our people to live in harmony, for our nation to move forward as one? Such questions I've been pondering. We should begin making our way to the council. Shall we continue our conversation while we walk? Ready? Then let us be off. If agreeable, I would like to look on for Tom Manor. It feels like another age that you and you also know were no more than foreign wards of House for Tom. And in actual fact, it may be, consi may be considered so. For your coming set in motion a chain of events that brought an end to the Dragonsaw War, ushering in a new age of harmony. You paved the way for meaningful change in our nation, and for that, you shall ever have my gratitude. Now then, shall we continue to the Architects? King Thoden is Knights Twelve, the murderers of R Ratatoxka. Since the truth of their ancient crime came to, to light, many have demanded that these images be torn down. Yet though that though what our founding fathers did was wrong, neither is it right to simply expunge them and their deeds from history. To do so would be to deny our people's part in what f followed for a thousand years. I have the chance to forge a new future, and we as a nation must decide how we can will confront our past. Forgive me, I'm lost in thought yet again. Let us join Deacon Clem at the vault. There you are, my friends. The council is about to convene. Let us take our place in the audience hall.
Esteemed members of the clergy and honored adherents of the faith, I ask you all, I thank you all for your attendance. In recent days, our nation has been wrecked by a series of tragedies. Those among us who do Holone's work have been transformed into abominations. This dreadful phenomenon has been brought about by the final days, and it is upon our despair and anguish that it feeds. Thus, if we are to prevent further tragedy, we must strive to ensure that all Ishgardians, clergymen and citizens alike, abide with peace and love for one another in their hearts. To that end, have I called this ecumenical council, the first in generations, that we might together determine a path forward for the church and our society as a whole. Since antiquity, the Ishgardian Orthodox Church served the people in two respects, as the Fury's spear to strike at the heart of dragonkind, and as the Fury's shield to safeguard the souls of men. But now we ha are at peace with the Dravadians, the Church need no longer serve as the spear, so we must now reconsider how we m might better serve as a shield for our brethren. The hierarchy must be reformed, and for that we need accountability. The upper echelon must be stripped of, a, of rank at a minimum, and the investigations conducted, trials held. If the evidence is sufficiently damning, then we may turn our attention to their doctrine of lies. As our predecessors did before us, we of the Synod have ever sought to interpret the scriptures to the best of our ability thence conveyed Heloni's will to the people. Such fervent pursuit of retribution at the expense of doctrine would come also at the expense of our faith. Have we won the war to lose our souls? Oh, Heloni, are you outside at your... Are we outside your grace? This bodes ill at this rate, someone might turn. Since the war's end, the church and the faithful have stood at a crossroads, unable to take the next step forward. His Grace Bishop Vartano, may you walk in Holone's halls, was one such soul, and in his longing for simpler times, he resorted to using forbidden magics to succumb to despair. In our minds, we renounce the lies upon which our nation was built. But in our hearts, we yearn for the righteous, misguided though it was, that gave us comfort and purpose for so long. So let us not forget who we were. Let us confront the mistakes of the past and learn from them that we do not repeat the mistakes of our forefathers. As fervent as we believed in our sacred duty, we struggled to accept the church's deception and embrace change. The legacy of Thorodin weighs heavy. There is a temptation to simply cast it aside like a mantle that suits us no longer. Yet, that would dishonor the sacrifice of those who went before. Countless souls who serve the people with purest intent. And so heavy though it may be, let us together bear this burden as we set forth new. Our friend Amigos risked life and limb to reveal the truth to us, the truth that our legends and our scripture were tainted by betrayal. 
but not wholly corrupted. Though the great walls and towering spires of our cities may have been built upon murder and deception, they rest upon a foundation immutable and true, a devotion to Hol Halone, whom we have worshipped since before our forefathers settled these lands. The church is a font of practical wisdom, and its teachings guide us in our daily lives. Such things define our faith no less than the lies. We can acknowledge our sins without renouncing our religion. Aye, and without rejecting who we are. A comprehensive review of scripture as well as historical literature will be necessary. Revisions, as appropriate, must be made to ensure that the truth of our past is preserved for future generations. With your, your peerless knowledge of church doctrine, I dare say none is better suited to leading that effort than you. I also expect that many eyes will be required to pull over all the tomes, and I know many idle men in winner of faith who would jump at the chance to do Halone's work once more. That day is so very long ago I had no answer to my father's words, but it seems the people had it with them in them all along. Council went better than I had dared hope. Truly, while the details remain to be decided, twas its resounding success. Your words helped everyone to find common ground. I know not how how to thank you. Much credit must go to Emigos. In the face of great hardship, never did he hesitate to press on. Our people have not forgotten this. What? Oh. Indeed. Well do I remember the day you flew into Ishgard upon a dragon's back. In making possible the impossible, you inspired us all. In you we glimpse the fury, a vision of courage in the face of uncertainty. Looking for your example, we shall endeavor to bring about change to the church for the future of all Ishgardians. There will, of course, of course still be those souls who struggle to rise above the mire of despair, but my fellow the fellows and I shall be there to take your, their hand in faith and love. For what is faith if not salvation? Well, I best return to the cathedral. We have much, much and more to do. Ah. But ere I forget, I have tracked down that which you requested. Some repairs will be necessary, but it will will be seen to with all haste. Wait, what? <laughs> I have tasked the deacon with finding a certain item, you see. A secret weapon, you might say. Even what we know of profane Fafnir, I suspect it will be of great use in our hunt. Once the repairs are complete, we shall be ready to strike. With the church having reached an accord with the people, the risk of more clergymen turning is greatly diminished. We may now focus great entirely on the blasphemy. Tis time we fe freed Vendro from his torment. Rest while you can, Emigos. I dare say the coming battle will demand the best of us. Alright, gonna go a little longer than I want uh, than I originally wanted.
glad tidings, amigos. Since the Ecumenical Council, not a single soul has turned. Okay. Safe in that knowledge, we need only think of how to hunt down the blasphemy. Ah, uh, Embegos, you are here too. Excellent. I am pleased to say the secret weapon is ready. You may now look to dealing with profane Fafnir. As you may recall, when last you encountered was lying in wait at the Soleil. Soleil. The instinct driven by its inherent memories, I believe, it seeks to protect that which is most strongly associates it most strongly associates with the Archbishop. In all likelihood, it was this self-same motive that compelled it to come to this Holy See. From that skies above, it keeps watch over the Holy Vault. When next it descends, shall, we shall exploit its instinct by using the secret weapon to lure it to the chancel. What exactly is the secret weapon? It's a secret. <laughs> Is none other than the Fury's Grace, the Holy Crozier of the Archbishop. Suspecting the, that Bishop Vartano had retrieved it from Asla, I had Deacon Clem search his private quarters. My suspicions prove correct. With the Crozier in hand, I shall make an irresistible bait, bait for profane Fafnir. My lord, this is an unconscionable risk. There's no telling how the blasphemy will react. Indeed, but we can be pr confident that our command lend is under divided attention, thus ensuring that no more of our citizens are placed in harm's way. If the Heaven's Ward are the Archbishop's shields, then the Temple Knights are the people's. As leader of the Order, the risk is mine to bear. All the knights of the Heaven's Ward fell in Azasla. As a vessel for their memories, Vendro may be considered the last of their number. Let us go then, and relieve him of his... Nay. Eh, their duty. Let us see to our preparations and proceed to the vault. We finish, we finish this once and for all. the tribunal is probably the closest. Uh, I mean, I suppose it's kind of iffy. The last visual might be just as close. <laughs> it's St. Raymond's Cathedral. I know it's not Raymond, but I can only pronounce so much. If you're ready, then let's, let us set forth. You need but say the word. The word. Here we go. Beast has come. Now is our chance. Make ready.
To me, my knights. That's for me, profane Fafnir. For the glory of King Thorin. No, you are not he. A trick. It is a trick. Forgive me, Sir v Vendro. For the sake of all his guardians, we must strike you down. did that wrong. Then you're God. Ooh, that was close. Ouch. Got a tank LB there.
Ah, of course he's gonna land on me. We all put away our swords. <laughs> Finally, it is over. <laughs> Thus ends the tale of the Heaven's Ward. Let it not be forgotten. T'was wrong of them to conceal the truth of our nation's founding, to abate the archbishop in his machinations. Yet in peering into their hearts, one thing became clear. They too were succumbed to primal man manipulation. They too were victims. Flawed men, aye, not without sin. But Ishgardians brave and true, as we all aspire to be. Having triumphed in the battle of ideals, I have a responsibility to all of our people. Their hopes and dreams, the sorrow and suffering are mine to bear, and bear them I will. For had you not vanquished King Thorin, or had I erred in but one of my choices, I may well have been the first to succumb to despair, to be reborn of blasphemy. Ridiculous, Ocean. It's more like to become I'm more like to become a beast than you. Thank you, my friend, for having such confidence in me. My apologies. It was not my intent to wax sentimental. Our work here is done. Let us continue return to the congregation. This time we'll just go in a direct path.
Confirm Albert. Here we go, permit me to offer my gratitude in helping us to overcome not only the blasphemy, but the despair which spawned it. But this is only the beginning. On the face of it, we may have may have made tremendous strides in breaking down ancient barriers within our society, but there yet remain great risks to be bridged. It is no easy thing to rise above a lifetime of preconceptions and prejudice. I myself have struggled to do so, as you must know. But I shan't give up. On the honor of my house, I will do everything in my power to bring, build a new Ishgard, one in which all people can see eye to eye, regardless of birth or station. Now then, I believe the deacon has some words for you too. Pray lend him an ear. My lord Emigos, may I say how glad I am that you are safe and well. Just before you arrived, Lord Emmerk, Emmerk explained to me the true nature of the man who became the blasphemy. Poor confused creature was born of the church's mistakes, and on behalf of the clergy, I give you my heartfelt thanks for leading to rest. As we work to reform our institutions and rebuild our relationship with the people, we will remember and pray for all who have fallen in service of the faith. And we shall pray for you as well. Wherever your path may lead, may the fury ever watch over you and keep you. I shall leave it at that, then. Lord Emmerich too wishes to speak, and twid not to not do to keep him waiting. And we get a cutscene with Emmerich. Emigos, Lord Arturo, I thank you for the vital roles you played in ridding us of profane Fafnir. As ever, the sight of you in combat is nothing short of inspiring. And no further report, and with no further reported instances of people turning the blasphemy itself no more, I would like to believe we are free of the scourge of despair. My brother and I shall labor to see that it ever remains so by fighting to dispel the darkness in men's hearts. And I shall fight with you, not only as the Speaker of the House of Lords or the Lord Commander of the Temple Knights, but as a man of faith, in our God and in our people. Together, let us strive to fill our nation with hope. Amigos, by now, you will be sick unto death of being thanked, but I must nonetheless express an additional word of gratitude. Full oft have you saved our nation, our people. I speak not only of our lives, but our hearts and minds as well. You have given us a great gift, that of opportunity and choice. If we are to repay you for it, we as a nation must take full advantage of our freedom to dictate a new course forward into a brighter future. But for other means, we may not always agree upon. But as fellow guardians, we'll find a way to rise above our differences and stand united. This is the nation I will strive to build. This, I swear to you. Amigos, given all that you have done for us, I am loath to impose further, but may it trouble you to bear word of our success to our officer in Ratatan. You will, of course, be sending a report, but there's no substitute to a first-hand encounter. Blah, 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 blah. This is basically the same thing as the other quest. Thanks, friend. May the fury speed you on your way. Back to Ratzatan! And being able to do our thing. Although I'm already red, so it's kind of... We'll take a look at what the dye looks like in the armor once once I can do it, and, and judge whether I am going to dye it at all.
But it's important to get the roll quest done because there's going to be an entirely new set of quests uh, in 6.1. Oh, my lord, Emigos, by your return, uh, I hope that the hunt for the blasphemy was a success. That you would have vanquished the beast comes a little surprise, but that this occasion would serve as impotence for the church to embark upon a new path of reform is incredible. I will share these joyous tidings with our allies without delay. If I may speak candidly, I would confess I'm being a great admirer of yours. When you have a moment, I would like to hear about some of your adventures, if you do me the honor. For the present, however, in my official capacity as Ishgard, the Ishgardian delegate, I offer you my humblest thanks for our, your immeasurable service to our nation. By the way, I'm a big fan. All right, magic range. Let's take a look at what dying this would do. Let's see. The boots are all black, so let's see what happens if I die the boots. Oh, yeah. Totally enhances. Oh, oh, look at that. However, the reds are slightly different shades, I think. Maybe, or maybe we're pretty good. I think we're good. So let's dye the gloves, see what that looks like. Put on the other gear. Yeah, I might have to dye everything. The shades are just slightly different. Oh well. Look, it's consistent dyeing between them. Oh, I think I already died the gloves. Right. It's just about color consistency. Um. Now I'm just more bred of the red mage. Last but not least will be to get the healers one set off. That will be with the Alamegan delegate, which is along with the Eldon delegate these two kind of go hand in hand mainly because rap on and Nanamo, they're 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 great friends and stuff so everything ends up being linked between those two though i'm not sure who connected there well maybe it's got gradania we got we got gradania we got old uh then how let me go and i think they're like there's like a little bit of old uh next to Thanalan, I should say. Thanalan, Black Shroud, uh, Girabanya. That's, that's... And I'm, I'm doing this to kind of show from your perspective versus mine. <laughs> For me, it would be flipped. It would be Black Shroud, Girabanya. But we will do that next time. Uh, that's it. A great stopping point. We did it! We did it all in like less than two hours. Yay! Which gives me way more time, uh, plenty of time to make some meatloaf before it comes out loud tonight, which is our What's Going Up episode for the month of January. Yes, we're actually doing what's going on in the month that it's actually for. Happens on occasion. 